Welcome back to the channel. Now in today's video, we're going to be doing another vehicle tour, but this time we're going to do my vehicle. This is really weird because normally, like I said, I would be, I'd be filming somebody else. I'd be filming their vehicle and they're doing the tour and I'm asking questions. So this is, yeah, this is basically for the new people. There's a lot of people that watch the channel that know the ins and outs of this. They've been watching each modification that I do, but I've never actually done a vehicle tour where I'd sort of talk about all of it as a collective. So this is mainly for like, the new people that have, you know, started watching the channel. So this is it. This is my pride and joy. This is my dream vehicle that I've had for 2022, I think I've had it since. And it is a Volkswagen Mark I 1980 early Westy pickup truck. The new Volkswagen pickup. It's built like a truck, but it drives like something else. In mountain green, which is a one year color. So they only did that paint job, that paint color for that one year. So it's, it's really special. It's similar to the UK Mark One Caddy. Obviously there's several differences and the Americans watching this, you'll know, but most of the UK people don't really know about this. Obviously dead giveaway is the square headlights. The bumper's different. There's a bunch of stuff that's different to this, but I've been in love with this type of vehicle for about over a well over a decade. And uh, I finally got my dream vehicle. Before, before I had this, I had a 1985 UK Mark I Caddy in red. My plan was to turn it into this. So my plan originally was to get a UK Caddy change the grill, change the headlights, change the front bumpers and everything and paint it mountain green and make a UK one look like an American one. But I actually got the legitimate real thing. It's uh, imported from California, so it's got a bit of patina on it. The paint is sort of chalky in some areas, so it's, it's been sunbaked. So even though it looks rusty, it's actually a really solid truck. Like underneath, we had a look underneath and all the metal is absolutely solid, even though it looks how it does. But anyway, I've done a whole bunch of stuff to it. I guess the story, the, the story of this truck in particular, I know there's people that have listened to the podcast before and there's people that have heard me t tell this story before but this is for the new people. It's such a weird coincidence of things. When I had the UK caddy, I made some friends in America. I was doing a podcast and I got talking to a bunch of people. One person in particular was called Eddie Owen Davis in California and me and him were talking. We got talking about mountain green trucks and how I love them so much and I'd you know, obviously love to have one. And he said, oh, I've found one in like this it's almost like a scrapyard over there in America. He's like, oh, I'm going to go and get it tomorrow. He went over and took loads of videos and photos of this thing. He sent them to me and then he said, I'm going to go and get this tomorrow. Sort of like, aren't you jealous type of thing. And I was like, oh, damn you. Anyway, the next day when he went over to the scrapyard, it had got, gone. Someone had bought it and it's moved. And he didn't know where it went. A couple of weeks go by, a couple of months go by, and all of a sudden I get tagged in all these like Instagram posts, and it's this, for sale in, in Brighton. And it's the exact same truck that my friend Eddie was showing me like months prior, which is the weirdest thing ever. So the story is that the next day when Eddie was gonna go and buy this and rescue it because it was just in a scrapyard 
and it didn't look the way it does now. And it got shipped over to Winchester, which isn't that far away from here. And then this guy bought it from America, shipped two over, this green one and then a silver one, early Westy again. He was like a collector of American vehicles and trucks and he just wanted something different. He like fixed a few things, like he'd done something with the brakes. Interestingly enough, the silver truck that came over had like all the good stuff on it, like this front bumper was from the silver one. The rear bumpers, which we'll get to in a bit, that's from the silver truck. And a few interior bits, the lights, in the back as well, the, the rear lights were from the silver truck. And so basically this green one was like trashed and he imported two over and just swapped all the good stuff onto this and made this the good one. Both got sold again separately. These guys in Brighton called Nutjob bought this and they were gonna turn it into a shop truck. They then ended up selling a bunch of their vehicles and this was one of them. And that was when everybody started to tag me in this when it came up for sale. Because everybody in the Volkswagen Mark I community knew that this was my dream sort of colour and everything. And I wanted to turn the, the Mark I caddy that I had into this. And then a real one turns up. A real one. And it's so weird that it was in Brighton of all places. Could have been up in Scotland. Could have been over in France. Could have been in Wales. But it ended up like less than 50 miles away from where I lived. Anyway, long story short, I struck up a deal with the guys over in Brighton. I would swap my 1985 UK caddy for this, the American import, just a straight swap. I went over there in February 2022, did a swap, swapped it over. And I documented the whole day on my channel. So if anybody wants to do a deep dive and see the how that went down, you can go back and have a look. When I got it, it was all black interior. It was a 1.6 CIS fuel injection um, with a three-speed gearbox. It was screaming at you when you were driving 50 miles an hour. And I was like, oh, this is, this is gonna get changed real soon. But no, I got it and I was absolutely made up. Like I said, all the the interior was all black and my in my head when I was going to you know make one that looks like this I was going to do the other colorway that this would have came in which would have been tan so yeah I got it drove it round for a bit and went on a few road trips with friends and very quickly realized that in a petrol uh, 1.6 petrol vehicle I was going to the fuel station a lot more frequently than my other friends that had diesel trucks. So straight away, I knew that I needed to change this and turn it into a diesel vehicle. Before we go in and see everything on this truck, the main theme for this is always practicality for me. I wanted to be, I don't really care how low it is to the ground. I don't really care how fast it is. It just needs to be like practical and it needs to be reliable and it needs to just do things. I don't want it to be breaking down. I don't, I don't really care about little things like that. But it was funny when I did the swap, I got this one and funnily, and I straight away messaged Eddie back in California and I just showed him a picture and be like, look, look what I got my hands on. And he was like, no way. And literally I'll put up the pictures now on the screen. I'll show you the video clips of him going over to view this and you can see what state it was in. Yeah, this is like a fucking gift from the gods. But it was really weird, like the, as soon as I got it, we did the swap and I was driving back from Brighton. I went to the fuel station and I got, I went to go get back in the vehicle and I got in on the passenger side. So stupid. Um, but then I very quickly realized that the keys that the guys at Brighton gave me they just gave me one um, ignition key. So like you have two keys, right? You normally have a, a key for the door and a key for the ignition. And they just give me one, oh sorry, they gave me two ignition keys. So I couldn't lock the thing as well. So that was a very quick thing. I had to quickly change the barrel, but yeah, we got it. We got it home and then I just slowly but surely started doing little things to it. So 
Like I said, there's so many things documented on this channel already of little things that I've changed and, and big things that I've changed. And so if you do want to go back and see, you can, but I'll show you the inside first. So <laughs> there's a few things that I'm still yet to change, but as you can see, it's, it's mostly tan. So let me go on the other side. So straight away, you can see there's a bunch of cables there. Don't show too much of the, the wiring because that is a very messy spaghetti junction right now, but that's all gonna change. It's got a really old fuse box. It's got like a, it uses ceramic fuses. Probably one of the next things I'm gonna do is update the fuse box to like CE2. I'm not really sure yet. We've done an engine swap. Uh, my good friend, Matt Waldock, who has worked with Auto Finesse. <laughs> um, you probably know him already. He, uh, he helped me do a whole engine swap and change the gearbox from a three speed to a five speed. So auto to a manual. And it's now got a 1.9 TDI engine from a Mark IV Golf, which is quite a common thing to do now. A lot of people do engine swaps. In America, they normally do like an ABA swap or a 1.9 TDI if they can get their hands on it. And especially over here in the UK, a lot of people do this uh, one, uh, PD-130, which is what's in it right now. Or they do a 20 valve swap, which is like petrol, you know, map it to crazy numbers and stuff. But that's not my style. But anyway, back to the interior. Um, we've got these lovely tan seat covers, which sent from my friend Winfred in New Hampshire. He sent these little covers. If you pull that handle there, you can pull it back. He's little, like written me a little note there, which you can sort of see. It's, the rest of the note is on this side as well. <laughs> but yeah. And as you can see behind here, I've got my emergency breakdown stuff. We've got a socket set, coolant, tools, uh, fire extinguisher, just in case. Um, we've got a carpet from Newton Commercial. They kindly sent me a carpet in biscuit color. And all the other stuff is sent from lovely people from the Mark I community. So this dashboard cover here, this is normally, this sort of felt thing is normally used to sort of like prevent the, the dash from cracking, but the dash is already cracked. So <laughs> to cover the cracks, my friend Kevin uh, from the US sent me this lovely tan colored dash cover. Uh, guy from Oregon sent me, his name is Mark One Mike. He sent me the two titty dash or the two titty cluster in wood grain uh, before I had a single uh, dial on there. And, uh, me and him were just talking back and forth for a while. I sent him stuff, he sent me stuff. And one of the things he sent was a two titty dash, uh, again, two titty cluster. So my friend Randall from Florida, I think he's from Florida, he sent me these like 52 mil gauges. And uh, no, Mark, is it Mark one Noah? I think Noah sent me a couple of gauges as well. They will be hooked up very soon. This dash was originally black and I just spray painted it tan and because this whole dash has been in and out more times than Danny D's. No, I can't say that. <laughs> this dash has been out so many times. I've obviously chipped the paint. So I, I will repaint this whole dash again. And there's a few other bits like the steering wheel, the clamshell, this thing here. There's a whole bunch of things in this truck, which my friend, Mr. Walter Poplin sent me. Again, all this has been documented in videos. He sent me the door cards. They are a bit scrappy at the moment because they were in, they're from an, uh, an early Westy rabbit, which was in the snow. So that's why they're damp and sort of like dog-eared is to put it kindly. But he sent me these door cards with the, all the accessories on the door card. A friend of mine, Brett Napoli sent me the uh, window cranks which i think are really really nice they sort of give it that luxury look whereas before they were like just plastic 
what about this speed dub thing? Oh uh, yeah, so that little vent there was 3D printed by my friend Rodney. His dad's got like a 3D printer. And because these uh, air vents are so like brittle, they snap really easily, but this is 3D printed. And so this is a normal one and he did a nice little VW badge on that side, which is quite nice. I've changed the cigarette thing out for two USB things in there so I can charge my phone and stuff. But after doing that, I feel like I need to put a cigarette lighter thing in again so I can use it for like pumping up things if I need to, or just using it for um, a few devices, electronics or whatever, charging batteries, anyway. So I actually had this, this sounds so silly, but I had this made on Etsy and this is actually the license plate number on the a replica plate that you can see in the photos, like when this was in California, this number plate, not this exact one, but these digits and this style plate was on the truck. And I just wanted to have it made just as something silly, like a little replica plate of the actual digits. And since I've done this, a few people have actually messaged me asking like, you know, where'd you get it done? Because I want to do the same sort of thing, but I don't know, it's just something a little bit fun. I've got some other novelty plates like at home and when we go to like shows and stuff, I'll just like stick a different one on. But yeah, I just thought I'd show you this. Let's go into the engine bay. Again, front bumper was from the silver truck, but basically I've done a bumper tuck. So before the bumper stuck out here, like, like a proper cop car. But now I've done the whole, it's quite a common thing. So this, this is the PD-130. Uh, my friend Matt did this. Um, it's got a whole bunch of stuff which is going to change. Like this pipe here is from a Audi TT. <laughs> It shouldn't look like that. Um, and that piece of welded pipe is, I think, an exhaust pipe. Again, this whole thing is going to change. <laughs> it's a bit of a mess, but it works. Um, and we did an engine swap in less than six days. It does its thing. It works. Um, this is what I call the piss bag, which is, uh, it's used to, the uh, washer bottle used to be over there. We had to relocate it and the bottle didn't fit, so we had to buy this bag of screen wash, which is <laughs> ace. Um, got a nice pipe back here, but you can't really see it. Um, it's for the air intake. And then, of course, we've got the turbo back here, which we've replaced. I think that's from a, a borer. You can't really see it, but it is there. Around the back here is a ECU from Tuning Technics. They sent us that um, just so that we could promote their business. So thank. it has been mapped, but I don't know what to. And I know in the future, I'm gonna relocate the ECU to inside because that's just not safe. You shouldn't really have your ECU on the uh, rain tray where it gets wet. As you can see, we've got a hydraulic clutch installed. See that thing there? That's, uh, that's for the hydraulic clutch. Feels nice. This is this is a intercooler here from a Ford. Uh, C, what is it? Ford Fiesta ST. Again, that will probably change. And then under here, we've got like all the original stickers for the uh, the CIS engine. So this is also this is a donation from Perry, my friend here in the UK. It's like a sound deadening thing, so you don't get much of the sound of the engine come through to you. Also, there's another thing I wanna get, which is like a rain tray cover, which covers from there to there on the other side. So all of that is like this. Um, and I think that's from France, and it just helps a little bit with like any leaks getting in from the rain tray into the cabin. So that'll be for the future. On to the wheels. These are the original wheels that came with the truck. Um, the only thing is when this truck came to me, it had black, the, the, someone painted the wheels black. And obviously originally, if you flipped them over, you'll see the original steel silver. And so I changed them from the black to a nice Halfords silver wheel color. This is the normal stock ride height. What I did was 
My friend Kieran donated some adjustable coilovers. We put them on and I actually put three inch drop plates on the back and I, wrote, I drove it like that for a while. What ended up happening is the truck was so low that with that PD-130 engine in there, the, the sump, the oil sump was so low to the ground that I couldn't really do anything about, I couldn't really do think anything about it. I couldn't have 15 inch wheels on there because then the tires would rub on the inside of the arches. And the, so what I ended up doing was I put a shallow sump on there. And then amongst all of this, I got my set of dream wheels, which are the ATS pepper pots from Spain shipped over here and I sprayed them silver again, got some lovely nice profile tires for the pepper pots, put them on and then it was really, really low, undrivably low. And so I had to just literally just go back to my original plan of keeping this truck. What word did I use earlier? Practical. Yeah, so I had to keep things, yeah, I wanted to keep things practical and because the truck was so low, the, the oil sump was so low, it just was unpractical. The, now have a look at this, right? There's a reason why this looks like this, because the other day I took these, like it had plastic trim, like it has like black and like faded silver plastic trim. And I started taking it off and the, the gunk didn't come off. So if anybody knows how to get that off, <laughs> let me know in the comments below. I also changed the wing mirrors um, multiple times and I stuck with these chromey looking ones. Isn't it, this does need a wash, but I always get bird shit on it every time after a wash. On to here, so I know you'll see an LX badge. This is not technically an, an LX truck but uh, I really like these badges and I'm trying to sort of like recreate a luxury version or an LX version of this truck myself. So with the LX model, you would have got the silver um, around the, the light thing, thing there, but uh, just spray painted that myself because, you know, rear bumpers, I, Actually, you remember earlier when I was saying how I went, there was a guy in Winchester who shipped these trucks over to him and he had the two trucks, he had the green and the silver and he put all the silver stuff onto the green stuff. But whilst he was doing that, he didn't put the rear bumpers on the green truck. So when I got it, there was no rear bumpers and there was no holes for rear bumpers. Like months and months after I got the truck, I messaged him and said, do you know if you've got any rear bumpers for this truck? And he did, he kept them. So th this truck has both front and back bumpers from the silver truck, which nobody really knows where it is. So there is somewhere out there an early Westie truck in the UK that looks like this, sort of. My partner's dad, Ross, helped me drill holes and mount these rear bumpers and I just think it it completes the look of the truck from front to back. I also did a little upgrade which you can find on the channel. I changed the rear reg plate lights to LED so they're super super bright because it's really difficult to get hold of the original bulbs here in the UK. As for the side of the truck you can obviously see the decals that somebody put on there many 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 years ago. I'm not a fan of the decals. Uh, I know there's loads of people that love them, but I'd much prefer if this truck was plain green. You'll see these here, like the three holes. Basically, a lot of people have seen there like these, the silver tie down things. So like originally there was like these, these like things riveted on or mounted on all the way around the truck. So someone put them on Look, you can see there as well was one and there and then when I got the truck someone had taken them all off and I don't like them anyway so I think one day what I'm going to do much against everyone's opinion is I'm actually going to 
get all those holes fixed. I'm gonna get the whole thing resprayed, a fresh mountain green. Don't actually care what anybody says. There's no way anybody's gonna change my mind. I know it's a one year color. I know it's super rare, but I want something to look after. Like look at all this. Look at that. Looks like freckles. Like look at my hand. Now look at the paintwork. Can you spot the difference? Nobody wants to see this. Nobody wants to see this. But no, like I love detailing cars and I just feel like there's not much point trying to detail this and paint correction and all that because look at it. Do you know what I mean? Look at it. Do you know what I mean? So, so yeah, there's a lot of like imperfections, which I know people are going to be like, oh, you can find the perfection in the imperfections. And I'm like, yeah, but nah. Like <laughs> so many things like, this is the thing that a lot of people don't understand, I don't think. Like, especially people in America, they have, in some places in America, they have lovely, beautiful weather all the time. Like in California. This will be fine in California. This ain't going to get worse. But here in the UK, where it's freezing cold and wet and miserable and grey, this will get worse. Now, I've used things like... What's that like oil you can get for wood? It's like uh, boiled linseed oil. I've put that on this to try and protect it, but it just, it just gets worse and worse over time. It gets darker. It doesn't stay this color. It gets really, really dark. So anyway, long story short, I'm gonna repaint it and make it really beautiful. One of the other things that we have changed on the truck is the exhaust. We had a peak underneath when we were doing the engine swap and it had the original exhaust, which was actually quite rusty. And so we took that out and we've actually put in a three inch exhaust, which has two boxes as well. I'm not really fussed about making this thing really loud. In fact, if we can make it quieter, that'd be great. So just, I thought I would mention that it's got a really nice exhaust on there. And uh, Matt Waldock again, massive shout out to him for sourcing all the parts and actually doing the engine swap for me amongst a whole bunch of other things. Onto this song, bitch. So this is one of, probably one of my newest additions to the truck. First things first, I wanna be able to camp in this. I wanna be able to sleep in the back. I also wanna be able to store things. I wanna be able to move things and go and go to the tip and stuff like that. So I kinda need to be practical, right? The other thing as well, I, I've been on a search for what's called a gem top, but there's none in the UK. There's some that look like a gem top, but they're not actually a gem top. Gem top is, a, a, again, a big topper, but it's in line with the roof. There's none of this business here that goes up. A gem top is in line and it goes all the way along and it's a lovely, it's the shape of it just suits the truck. It's a 460 gem top and with a really big window that actually suits this, because this is ugly as, this is really ugly. It looks like a, like a wheelchair vehicle. You know, it's like Citroen, what are they called? Citroen something? You know what I mean? Those vans that are like well capable for like a wheelchair access. That's what this reminds me of. But like the gem tops are these beautiful like toppers with these massive windows that go all the way along and they actually suit the vehicle. But anyway, I'm still on the search for a gem top, but in the meantime, I came across this. A guy in the UK had a bunch of like Ford Escorts and Datsuns, like all these old trucks. And he imported this from South Africa, which was on a South African backy. And he was selling this on Facebook separately for like 200 pounds and i was like i was sort of like in the right place at the right time like i had newly been added and i just messaged him and said i'll buy that off you went over there and he helped me put it on and here we are it's got windows all the way around two sliding windows one there and now you're about to see the inside of the the truck this is the hq this is the the sex dungeon if you will no, it's not really. Look at that, a T25. Show the, show the viewers. That's a T25 with square headlights. Look at that. That is beautiful. 
Hey. Anyway, back to this. So I've been slowly doing things for this. It looks super dark in there, doesn't it? I did a 5% limo window tint, but like when I was doing it, it looked really nice. And then like a few days go by and it's starting to like peel off and bubble up and flake off. So I'm tempted to just keep it on there for now and then just maybe either redo it or take it off completely because it is super dark. I don't know if I did it right. <laughs> but anyway, this is my this is my little camper now. We've got an IKEA mattress and I've cut out for the wheel arches so there's no like overlap. I've stayed in it on Boxing Day with my partner and a dog and we fit funnily enough and it wasn't really cold. Um, got this lovely little Aztec um, blanket throw thing for Christmas which I kind of look like the aesthetic. I got this plank of wood from B&Q. Let me show you how it works. I'll give you the scenario. You're in bed, you're camping somewhere, but it's cold. You want to have the heater on. So what do you do? You put this plank of wood on like that. You get your heater, you lay in bed, you put your heater on there. So it's not on a mattress. It's not dangerous. You can put that there. You've got plenty of room and you can just toast the, uh, toast up the space jobs are good and so that's what that and obviously you can use it to put like your iPad there or laptop and you can watch some something before bed love it so that's what the plank of wood is for <laughs> now this this is like a little tap and it's got like a soap dispenser so you could just literally wash your hands but yeah normally it has loads of bedding in there but it's winter now and I don't want to get things moldy. Underneath the mattress is this foam stuff, which you'd find at like a gym or a baby's crash. <laughs> is crash the right word? Crash? Nursery. Nursery. So that's cut to size. This is, uh, it's called a Beekman. There's like a little tab there, which is a Beekman. Don't know if that means anything to anybody. It's the direction I want to go. I was sick of sleeping in the tent when we go camping. And so I think this is going to be off the ground, warmer, no faffing about putting pegs in the ground, putting poles in tents. And there's like no pack up time and no, do you know what I mean? This is so much easier. So the only thing I've had to do is I've had to take out the old uh, rubber seal under this under this back window, take it out. And I had to use the, uh, that solvent or whatever it's called. It's called uh, sticks like shit, which is like this like glue stuff. And uh, my friend Kieran helped me do that. And it, now it doesn't leak. So amazing. You want to check the tailgate out? It's pretty straight. Pretty straight tailgate. <laughs> All things considered. But anyway. That's that. The other thing as well I've changed is this was the original handle. And this is a handle I got off of like eBay. And because when I got it, there was nothing on the other side. So I've made it possible to shut from the inside. And I can also lock it from the outside. I've got the key for that as well. This is like a little sticker that I've started doing. Um, I've got a few left. This is a, a sticker that I've made. So if anybody wants some of those, just leave a comment below and I'll, I'll send you some for free if you live in the UK. Uh, what should they comment in the... Worry less, travel more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Free sticker. Right, right, worry less, travel more in the comments below and uh, get in touch. We'll, you will have to send me your address, but I'll send you a bunch of these stickers. That, was, that sticker was already there. I'm gonna take that off. So many things that I wanna to do to it still. Like, like I said, I'm gonna repaint it. I'm gonna get my friend Kieran to help me with that up in West Yorkshire, I believe. And uh, we're gonna repaint it a real nice green. We're gonna get chrome waistline trim and chrome trim at the bottom. And it's just gonna look really nice. The other thing I'm gonna do interior wise is install a really nice sound system so like a, maybe a, a slim sub under the seat 
with like speakers everywhere. Nice and subtle, but music is a massive part of my life, so I need to have a good stereo. The other thing I need to change, actually, for some reason, I worked this out the other day, these, the windows, look at that, there's like a little tiny gap. See that? Yeah. It doesn't have that on the other side. These are like, they're two different windows. Yeah. They're two, two different shapes. So I want to replace the windows, weirdly. Yeah. Also, I've, I've noticed this, little bubbling of paint here, little crack there, which everybody knows what that is. So I'm gonna have to give that attention at some point. This is what I'm saying. I'd love to ha keep this a nice patina truck, but things like that are just going to get worse and worse. So it's like, what would you rather have a... Have yeah, so you've seen my ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, you know what rust is like. Welding. Rust never sleeps, mate. Oh, and the other thing as well I forgot to mention about the back is curtain-wise and like privacy. Before I had the window tint, I had like, I had uh, like, in Ikea and other places, you can buy um, blackout material, right? And so I had all these, like, all this material cut out and I was attaching them to the truck with magnets. <laughs> what are even magnets? Um, and I, so basically I had like bits of material just mag magnet magnetized? Yeah, I guess so. I had bits of material up instead of the blackout tint. And they just keep kept Great. falling down. Yeah, they just they were just really bad. But so that whole the whole thing of privacy with the inside of there, that story is not over. I'm still experimenting with different ways. But yeah, obviously added a bunch of stickers. Feel free to pause the video now if you want to quickly have a look. That's enough. <laughs> the, it's near done. Like it's finished pretty much i can i drive it every single day like i said there's so many adventures that i'm yet to go on i want to do the north coast 500 in this we've got caddy campers this year up in scotland in fort william there we've also got this event called wheels for wales that's happening obviously in wales so this is yet to go on a fair few adventures so much that i've done to replace and maintain like, I've probably forgotten a whole bunch of things, but never mind. You can always go back onto the videos and have a, like I say, you can have a deep dive at things I've done in more detail that I've changed. I'm just trying to think, top of my head, what else I've done. I do actually want to take the time to thank a dear friend of mine, Adam Webb, who you've seen on the channel before. I just want to say a massive thank you for just saving my skin on many occasion with this truck especially we've had wiring issues teething problems just indicators not working lights not working a whole bunch of stuff and i wanted to really really just acknowledge that adam you've saved my ass and you've helped me get back on the road many a time so thank you i appreciate you this is the thing i was playing around with this idea because when i first put this shell camper shell thing on the back I took a step back and I was like that looks like the, the um, pizza planet truck from Toy Story <laughs> so I started googling how to make the rocket that sits here and they like people have done it man they've put like they've made like a paper mache or whatever a fiberglass rocket and they've put like lights in there so never say never but I might do that for like Halloween or something there was the idea that I was going to put like off-road tires on there, which I still might do, but for now I just, I drive it the way it is and still love it, you know, still love it. But yeah, thanks MTV, <laughs> that's my truck. And there you have it. Like I said at the beginning of today's video, it's mainly aimed at the people that are brand new to the channel and wanted to have a little deep dive on the truck that I drive on a daily. Thank you for watching today's video. Remember to like and subscribe for more videos coming very soon. I was only joking, I have a kill switch. <laughs>